Hello everyone. Hi, welcome to the channel of Wall Street Mojo. Friends, today we are going to learn a topic that is what are the valuation methods that one you, you know uses when they are valuing a company for M and A, for IPO, or for whatever may be the reason, and for equity valuation, for equity research. But what are the top five equity valuation model that you actually should be aware of? Here is the list of the uh, the methods that have been used: discounted cash flow, the universal method. Comp comparable companies or comp valuation, comparable transaction that's called precedent transaction method, the asset based valuation NAV you can say, and there is a sum of parts. The discounted cash flow is basically the present value of the all the cash flow, the projected of unlevered free cash flow. It captures the intrinsic value, the fair value. The comparable company analysis is the next method. It's based on the trading multiples, like you know, EBITDA, EV by EBITDA, or EV by revenue, EV by sales, or EV by cash flow. You use the comparable, com you can say the trading multiples, and then you take an average and incorporate the same in your company. Then there is a precedent transaction method or comparable transaction method. That means the transaction that has taken place in the past of various companies will be used. To value your company, which because those transactions should actually those transactions should have taken place in the same industry in the same lined up, and again the same metrics can be used. The trading multiples can be used for valuing the company. And then the next is the asset valuation. See, based on the fair value of the it's basic basically the fair value of the individual assets. Book value may not be equal to the fair value. Absolutely, that's the most important thing. Some of the parts. Divides the business into separate sub entity or the parts. You cannot say the spin off or spun off, but yeah, divide into parts. They add the value of each part to find out the total value. It's like you make the things into piecemeal and then you value each of them and then you sum it up. So that's how you do. So an appropriate valuation method is one which has the ability to incorporate all the relevant factors for uh, that have that have material uh, effect. That have basically the uh, material effect on the same, and uh, it is the one which has the ability to incorporate all relevant factors. Choosing the correct equity valuation method is extremely important. See, so when valuing young companies, startups with limited history of equity from the private investor, they do not have the past history and are also susceptible to failure. So valuing such companies becomes really difficult. And however, valuing public you can see public listed suitable companies. You have a lot of financial information available by the way of annual reports, press release, and uh, so on and so forth. So you need to you need to note that you know the correct equity valuation method depends on the availability of the data. That's the most important thing, and the stage of the development of the target. So the ability of the target is to generate. The ability is to to generate the positive, uh, basically the cash flow. You can say the positive cash flows. So, the first method that we are going to learn is the DCF method. That is the discounted cash flow method. Here is the example of Alibaba's discounted cash flow model. Alibaba is worth with one ninety one point five billion dollars. That's a huge valuation. See how it has been calculated. Explicit period, terminal period, and that is the present value, the net present value. And then you calculate the enterprise value by and, and you add back cash, deduct debt, you find the equity value, make such adjustments. And with the help of that, finally, you will receive the final valuation adjusted equity value of the company. So DCF is the net present value NPV of the projected cash flows by the company. DCF is based on the, you know, the principle that value of a business or asset is basically the intrinsically based on its capacity to generate the cash flows. That is the explicit and the terminal value. Hence, DCF relies more on the fundamental expectations, you can say that, of the business than one public market or factors or the historical model. So it is more of a theoretical in nature, you can say that approach which relies on various assumptions. A DCF analysis helps on yielding the overall value of a business enterprise value, including both the debt and the equity. And you know, you need to take care of one thing that you know, while calculating the present value of the expected future cash flow is calculated. The disadvantage of this technique is, you know, estimation. Estimation of the future cash flow. The next method that you can use for valuation of any company is the comparable transaction or the comp company valuation. Now, you know, 
this is the equity valuation method that involves comparing you know operating metrics and and, and valuation models of public companies with their target companies so i'll show you something now this is the list of the comparable company analysts of box inc ipo's equity valuation model as you can see a couple of companies that have been taken and the three of the multiples that have been evaluated and mean and medians have been found to evaluate the other details so uh, this equity valuation method involves uh, you can say that uh, comparing the operating metrics and valuation models of the public companies with that with that of the target companies okay and usually the equity valuation multiple is the quickest way of valuing a company apart from that it is useful in comparing the companies that are doing comparable company analysis so the focus is to capture the firm's operating and financial characteristics the next method that you need to uh, that that actually is going to help you in valuation is comparable transaction method now when we talk about comparable transaction method as you can see this is the comparable transaction com of box ipos valuation these are the target this is the acquirer and what was deal size the ev by sales and post that we have incorporated or we have evaluated the mean what is the highest of the above and what is the lowest of the above and based on that we'll take the decision see value of the company using the equity valuation method is uh, estimated by analyzing the price of of that what has been paid for the similar companies in the similar circumstances so this kind of valuation method helps in understanding the multiples you can say the multiples and the premium that has been paid in the specific industry and how the private market valuations were assessed by the other parties so this equity valuation method requires a familiarity with the industry and uh, the other assets when choosing the companies for this type of analysis and one needs to keep in mind that there are similarities between the factors such as the financial characteristics you can say that and same industry size of the transaction the type of the transaction and uh, any traits of the transaction which are the characteristics of the transaction now the next method of valuation that we should consider is the asset based valuation now in case of asset based valuation the asset based valuation method takes into account the value of all the assets and the liabilities of the business under this approach the value of the business is equal to the difference between the value of all the relevant assets less the value of all the relevant liabilities so this can be easily understood you know with with one example as you can see there is a liability and assets over here share capital reserves and couple of assets based on this if we go down we'll see the valuation by using asset approach you will add all the assets like fixed assets stock Data's cash in hand that is your total assets and from that you will deduct all the liabilities that is the creditors bank overdraft and uh, based on which you will get the total liabilities when you deduct the assets minus the total liabilities you will get the value of the company which is uh, close enough to 45 for lakh 50000 the last method that we need to evaluate is the sum of parts valuation model now as a conglomerate with a diversified uh, business interest may require a totally a different valuation model and we value each business separately remember that thing and add up the equity valuation so this approach is called the sum of the part of the valuation method now uh, it's like you know in order to value the conglomerate like you know mojo one can use equity valuation med uh, model to value each segment like automobile segment valuation uh, it could be best if we can do that valuation with the help of ev by ebitda valuation method if it is this is the case of automobile okay uh, if it is the case of oil and gas then you can use the segment that is like ev by ebitda is one one of one of the way you can calculate by ev by uh, boe that is your equi uh, equity value divided by the barrels of the oil equivalent for software companies you can go some of the valuation methods like price divided by book value ratio in case of the e-commerce e segment you can go for the valuation uh, method like ev by sales uh, subscriber ratio ev by multiple and uh, so on and so forth so the major core total valuation is the uh, the automobile sector the oil and gas segment the software segment and the bank valuation and the e-commerce e segment 
Thank you, everyone. These are the methods of uh, these are the five methods for valuation.